Sand is everywhere. We use 40 to 50 billion tonnes of sand and gravel around the world every year. 40 to 50 billion tonnes. It's a fundamental resource to construction and construction is one of our biggest industries. It's a massive amount, but sand is a finite resource. Now we're facing a growing problem. It's not an infinite resource, it is running out and once we put it into buildings it's actually really difficult to get back out. There's been a decade of conversation around a sand crisis. As the world runs out of sand, researchers say something needs to change, from the way we build our cities to the way we destroy them. To explore what can be done, nature has brought three sculptors, two academics and 17 tonnes of sand to this recycling plant in London. This is a story that starts off with a grain of sand and reaches around the world impacting global carbon emissions and the economics of an enormous industry. In this film, we're going to ask a question. Could the solution to the sand crisis be to start thinking circularly? If you're looking for sand, uh, look out for concrete and you know what that looks like. You think about the buildings, the columns and the blocks that make up our buildings. So there's sand in there. About 30% of concrete is sand. Jacqueline Glass's research focuses on transforming the construction industry, including making better use of the precious materials like sand that make up our cities. But not all sand is created equal. In fact, particles of building sand have very particular properties. So they look a little bit like triangles or squares. They've got nice little pointy bits to them because that helps us bring them all together and get them to stick together properly. This is what sand made by water erosion looks like. Unfortunately, that doesn't apply to the sand found in abundance in deserts around the world. And that's quite different because that's formed by the wind blowing. So it makes these very smooth, rounded little particles and they just don't come together as well. So we can't use the desert sand for construction. So getting the right kind of sand is harder than you might think. And often it means disturbing local ecosystems. We're taking sand, we're mining it or we're extracting it from say rivers or beaches along the coast. And it affects nature, it affects animal life, it affects water flows. And yet, because sand is in such high demand, illegal mining operations are rife. And that sometimes involves forced labour and slavery. So the extraction of sand can lead to social problems locally as well as environmental. As well as concrete, this sand is used to make building materials like cement, bricks, mortar and tarmac. It's everywhere, from the foundations of buildings right up to the top of the tallest skyscrapers. But while a sand castle can be turned back into its original building material and remade over and over again, the same isn't always true for the sand used in buildings. Once we put it into buildings, it's actually really difficult to get back out and, and reuse. Fiona Charnley is an expert on circular business modelling, working with different industries to think about the resources that they're using, reusing and, potentially, wasting. We tend to focus on the design of buildings and the use of buildings uh, once they're constructed, but give little thought to what happens afterwards, the demolition process, can we reuse the valuable materials and resources that are in buildings. Researchers like Fiona are arguing that there needs to be a change in the whole economic model for construction. Within our current linear economy, materials and products flow from the mining company through to the manufacturers, to the retailers and then to the end users and typically end up in landfill. However, there's lots that we can do to retain that value and loop it back into our system. Thinking about looping and maintaining the value of materials like sand across their whole life is part of an idea known as the circular economy. So the circular economy, actually, it's, it's not that revolutionary. It's just taking the core components of our linear economy and rearranging them. So actually that we're sharing that value, we're feeding that value back into the system. And products and materials are inherently designed to go round and round and be used as many times as possible. By circulating materials back into the industry, there's less waste and that reduces the need to extract new materials, something particularly relevant to sand and construction. In the UK, 
the construction and demolition industry produces well over 100 million tonnes of waste a year. 29 million tonnes of that goes to landfill, which does mean we're recovering and reusing, re recycling quite a lot. Recycling concrete like they do at this plant is an important part of making construction more sustainable, but it's not always the most efficient option available. That recycling process is hugely energy and resource intensive and it means breaking that product down into its component parts or even destroying the materials. What happens is kind of what you can see here. We demolish the building, we take it apart and we break it up. And it means that those components that were designed with such care will never get that value back from these materials ever again. We can only use them in a, in a lower grade application because we now don't know what they're capable of. The circular economy provides alternatives to recycling waste materials. If we go back to the design process, we can understand why there's waste there in the first place. It's because we're thinking in rather a linear way and we're almost expecting waste to happen. So people are really interested in design for deconstruction, design for disassembly. One alternative to recycling is buildings with components that can simply be reused as they are. So for example, with precast concrete, we could remove a whole piece of a building, whether it's a floor beam or a column, and we could reuse it in its entirety because it's been designed to be taken apart. And also, we know exactly what it was designed to do in the first place. So we can reuse that entire piece with confidence. Even more efficient than reusing components is reusing entire buildings. So for example, the University of Cambridge, the Centre for uh, Sustainability Leadership, um, its new building was a telephone exchange. So they've kept the, almost the whole building intact from previously. They've brought in a whole reception desk which was destined for waste. It was destined for landfill. In fact, simply extending the lifespan of a building while it's in use is a key part of the circular economy. The most efficient way that we can retain the value that's within products is at the use phase. The user can maintain and look after their product themselves. They can get them refurbished and upgraded. And then once the part or the product has come to the end of its life with one user, it actually can be shared between multiple users. Sometimes that can mean considering alternatives to knocking a building down and starting again. The in-use phase of a building is actually often overlooked. But there's huge potential there. And this is again about looking forward when you're designing. Because you can think about how can I help its future occupants or its future owners to adapt the building rather than having to demolish it. So for example, one of the older buildings at Canary Wharf, which was built in 1991, the piles, and these are the concrete feet that hold a building up, they are quite deep. Actually, they can take more building on top. And what they've been able to do is they've been able to keep that building intact and make it bigger because those piles can take extra weight. So that building now has a longer life than might have been expected because it's been able to be adapted and extended. The circular economy isn't a revolutionary idea, but it's one that could change the way we think about sustainability. It's only really in the last 10 to 12 years that the term circular economy has been used much more frequently and actually I think it's a fantastic framework for businesses to understand that actually sustainability doesn't just have to be about reduction and recycling and minimising but actually the circular economy is about creating new revenue, new profit, new value and about innovation and entrepreneurship. But that's not all. The production of concrete and cement accounts for something like 4 to 8% of global carbon dioxide emissions. That's more than the output of most countries. And a circular construction model could drastically reduce those emissions. The circular economy is a key way of helping us to achieve our uh, 2050 climate goals and to help tackle climate change. Um, and it really needs to be introduced as core strategy, both in our industrial strategy, uh, but also our climate policies to make sure that we have the right legislation in place to, to help us to create this shift. According to Fiona, cooperation between government and industry will be key and academia too has a role to play. 
At the moment, the circular economy has been largely industry-led. Businesses are innovating, particularly small businesses and entrepreneurs, and to a certain extent, academia is still catching up. There's a real emphasis on, on academia to provide the underpinning evidence base to back up a lot of decisions that we'll need to be making to implement circular economy and also collaboration between academia, industry and policy is going to be essential because this shift we need to do at scale. We can't just look at independent parts of, of our economy or particular materials or particular businesses. We need to all be joined up to be doing this together. I've always been passionate about the environment and sustainability and even making small interventions into the way we build, changing even one architect's decision about the way they build and the materials they choose can have a real carbon benefit. So if I can influence even one person to think a little bit differently, that's what's important to me. I love concrete. <laughs> you can't use that though. <laughs> A bit biased, really. Um, 